Hello and welcome to project two of CSC 259. In this project, we are going to implement chess game. You must have heard about Deep Blue and the AI stuff about playing chess with the grandmasters. Well, these are the stepping stones for you to implement your own big AI chess game. An initial file, along with the description of what you have to do, has been provided in your modules. A part of the code has been implemented in a file called test.pl. You need to download this and complete various tasks. There are mainly three tasks for you to complete. The first one is to create a visualization of the board. That is to say, which coin is in which location on the board at any point of time. The task two is to implement the moves of player A. The moves of player B and the strategy for player B have been provided. It uses an algorithm called the min-max alpha beta pruning. You need to implement an equal and code for player A who moves. Player A takes the white moves while player B takes the black. Task three is for you to automate the moves played by player A. Before we move into the tasks, let's see what's provided or get an overview of what's provided in the code. The first thing you need to understand is something called the state of the board. The state of the board is the list of the current positions of the coins on the chess board. The initial state of the chess board is provided over here where you see a main, the top are the black coins and the bottom are the red coins. So if I say A1, you will see an R representing a white rook, whereas A8 represents star R is a black rook. Similarly, a knight, a queen, king, and so on. The state board contains what are the pieces in a particular current location. For example, piece A8, black rook, says A8 contains a black rook. Piece B2, white pawn, says there is a white pawn in the location B2. This initial state has been provided for you. And every move that you do updates this state board. Those moves are also provided. As stated before, the algorithm for playing this game or the brain behind it is the min-max min algorithm with alpha beta pruning. More about this in part two. Other functions are some utility functions that are provided for you. One of them is deciding whether a move is valid. If there is already a coin in a particular cell, another coin cannot sit on it unless there is a kill move. A rook cannot traverse the diagonals. It can go either vertically or horizontal in a straight line. The second is a value function. This is used to define what is a winning move when the computer plays the game. The third and the fourth are very, very important functions. One is the my member function. My member function takes in a term x and a list. And it tells true if x belongs to the list. So if I say, for example, piece A8, black rook, look at this initial board and tell me what would be the answer. Is it a true or a false? Is it a yes or a no? The second important function for you is a pair function. It maps a value key pair. For example, we have an A over here and the numericals over here. These alphabets can also be replaced by appropriate numericals. So the pair function tells me that row eight actually represents A and row one 
represents is represented by the key H. Similarly, a rook is represented by R, bishop by B, king by K, and so on and so forth. These functions are something that you will have to define. Now let's move into seeing task one of the project. Task one is to provide the visualization of the board, that is the current state of the board we displayed on your screen. So after say two moves, you make a move of moving the pawn in E2 to E4, and black has made move of pawn in E7 to E5. The state of the board would be as provided to the left of your screen, and its representation will be as provided to the right. Now for it to print out this visualization, you should provide the code. Having done project one where you printed out ASU within a box, project two or task one of project two should not be very, very difficult. It is different, but not very difficult. A placeholder has been provided in chess.pl for you to provide your code. So it says something like this, task one, replace this print board predicates below with your code. So you remove the print board, and whatever you write, you provide it over here. In my view, I would like to use a separate file to first get my code and then use that to provide it back here. Remember, some things, some data, like the my member function, the initial board will be required from the main code to implement or complete my task one. So given the initial board state, my duty is to translate it into a printable or readable chessboard format. I break down these tasks into two steps. First step is to draw the chessboard. The second step is to fill it up with the appropriate coins based on the location. So let's jump into step one. How do I see this board? I can look at it as two lines, the top plus and dashes, and the pipes with spaces in between repeated eight times. And how do I make this one, these two? It's simple. It's these two repeated eight times again. So keeping this in mind, my entire board is a representation of eights repeated multiple times. So this part of it, let me call it a cell and the entire previous, let me call it a line, okay? The simple thing for me to do is in this line, I need to draw two things. One is the plus and the dashes. I call it draw up bot border, bottom border, draw up bottom border. And what do I provide it? the number of times it has to repeat this one small box. Similarly, the second one, I call it draw content cell or content line. And I provided the line number and the column number. Again, remember, I need to repeat these two eight number of times. So that's my column number. So what does my draw up bottom border do? Simple thing, it draws a plus followed by dashes and repeats, calls itself again until it finishes drawing all the eight. Look at the last corner over here. It is a plus. And these are recursive functions. So recursive functions should have a base case. So my base case for draw up border bottom is a simple plus drawn one single time followed by a new line function. The next part of it is draw content line. What does my content line do? My content line draws a pipe followed by spaces. So that is provided under draw content cell. Each time I talk about something, I think about breaking it down into smaller functions, which I need to solve. So draw board was broken down into draw up bottom border and content line. 
draw a border was completed using the function draw symbol and draw content line is completed using the function draw content cell. And let's see why we are putting another function. But before we move into that, draw content cell draws a pipe followed by four spaces and repeats this eight times that is provided to me in C or in the columns, each time calling itself again by decrementing C. Again, just like in the border, the last one is a pipe symbol. And so the base case draws a pipe symbol. With these two functions, I should be able to draw the box. But there are two pending items. One is the numericals before each row. And the second is the alphabets representing the columns. For the sake of the numericals, my draw content line draws the line number followed by drawing the rest of this. And that's why I break it up into two functions. Uh, content line first draws the number followed by calling a function called draw content cell. For getting the alphabets below, it's very simple. Spaces followed by the appropriate alphabet, A to H. That's it. That finishes step one, which is the skeleton of your chessboard. Well, to go further, what you can do is try to provide representation of each of the cells within it. For that, I do one simple change. I remove the draw symbol from content cell and fill it with draw cell. Draw cell puts a space followed by the cell representation and another space. What is the cell representation? It is the alphabet followed by the numerical. That's how we call the cell in a chess game. Here is where the pair function becomes very, very useful. You remember the column is given as a numerical. So if it says eight, I need to remember it is eight. So the pair function matches the value eight to the key A. And that value is what you need to fill over here. So it is the key pair given as fill followed by the line number, which is the value. These two would provide the input into each of the cells. Do this to understand how you need to fill the values into each cell because that is important for step two. This completes your entire task one and we are moving into task two. This is a sort of an intermediate step. What do you need to do for step two? Step two, you need to decide on what are the coins, their exact location, and provide that in your board. The initial state of the board has been provided to you in chess.po, and this is how it looks. Remember, it's a linked list. Linked list containing the various positions of the elements or the coins on a chessboard. It would look something like this. How do I translate what I have represented here into this? Again, it's just a couple of simple changes. You define an additional set of pairs, pair that maps rook to R, bishop to B, and so on and so forth. Then the second step that you need to do is change your draw cell. In your draw cell function, you need to decide if there is a value in your cell. To find if there is a value in your cell, you remember the my member function? Use that. So my member piece name, name here representing the letter and the alphabet and the line representing the numerical of the row. So for example, A8, A8 would be black rook. Using this, my member function would say, 
yes, if there is such a value. And if there is such a value, the color and the piece are picked up. So given A8, my color gets set to black and the piece gets set to rook. Now tell me, if I give you the value A5, what would it be? A5, what would it be? If I give you E1, what would that be? E1. So given this, if there is a value, it represents an yes. So you're getting the value of the color and the piece. If, it, if there is a color, if it is black, you put a star. If it is white, you put a space. If there is a piece, you use the pair function to get the value of the piece, the key for the piece, and write that. And that's it for the values where there is a value. If there isn't a value, then it is important for you to understand this symbol, a slash followed by a plus. A slash followed by a plus represents negation in prolog. So if my member represents no, then slash plus will convert a no to an yes. And if it represents gives you an yes, a slash plus will convert a yes to a no. In case there is no value, this becomes true. And if that is true, all you need to do is to fill spaces. So changing your draw cell function this way should help you draw your entire board with these values. Once you finish doing this in a separate file, all you need to do is copy the appropriate functions into your main chessboard. So let's quickly have a look at how does this work, okay? So file consult, for me it's called game board skeleton for the initial skeleton. It's compiled. All I need to do is and there you see, uh oh, this is the completed board. So let me just see console. Yeah. Amazing. So that's your skeleton. And as you already saw previously, uh, so let me do the consult again. The game board helps me provide my entire board. That's it. So that's it for task one. With this, we'll be able to complete task one. Task two and task three, we'll get to in the next lecture. Thank you.